lanes on the highway. The first is the emerging evangelicals. By evangelicals, I mean that doctrinally, they believe that the Bible is God's word. We're sinners. Jesus was born of a virgin, lived without sin, died on a cross, rose for our salvation, that there really is heaven, there really is hell, the big issues. And emerging evangelicals tend to do kind of hip, cool church and church within a church and church planting. And guys that are in these this lane are like Dan Kimball, who's a friend, and Rick McKinley, who's a pastor and a friend, and John Burke, who's a good guy and a friend, and Donald Miller, who wrote the book Blue Like Jazz, kind of blew up on him. He's a good guy uh, and a friend. And, and these guys are just trying to say, well, we're not trying to change all of Christianity. We're just trying to figure out how to make church and Christianity more relevant, more applicable for people who otherwise have no interest in Jesus or church. And we would disagree with them on a few things. A lot of them have women pastors and such. But for the most part, that lane's fine. You know, we're not going to do any drive-bys. We love them. It's cool. All's well. All right. Now, uh, the next team is the house church evangelicals. And again, doctrinally, they're Christian brothers and sisters. We would disagree on a few minor things, but no reason to run their car off the road. Um, And the house church thing is they say, you know, let's get rid of buildings and pastors and preachers like me. And uh, to which I say no. But anyways, they would say that and they would say, let's stop having big church. Let's do little church. Let's meet in houses and coffee shops and let's just do 10, 20, 30 people max. And uh, let's do house church. They would say it works around the world, and I would say, yeah, it tends to work in countries like China where Christianity is outlawed and it has to go underground. I don't think it works best for this culture. And they would say, but it's biblical. And I would say, well, the early church in Acts 2, they met from house to house to be sure, and they met in the temple courts for large meetings. And I would say Mars Hill's built that way. We do our large meetings on Sunday. We meet in homes, basically house churches with meals and Bible study and prayer and care and share and love and community and relationship during the course of the week. And they're not trying to change what we believe. They're just trying to innovate a new style for church. Thirdly, the emerging reformers, this is my team, so obviously this is the right one. And so I'll explain it to you in great depth. Uh, These are people who believe all of the evangelical distinctives and are trying to find a way to make the church more relevant, accessible, culturally connected. Uh, A lot of us are involved in church planning. That's our Acts 29 network that we're privileged to be a part of with some great guys. Uh, This includes uh, other church planning networks like Dr. Tim Keller's in New York and Sovereign Grace with C.J. Mahaney. Uh, We love the Reformed theological tradition. So we love John Calvin and Martin Luther and the Puritans and Jonathan Edwards and Charles Haddon Spurgeon, one of my personal favorites. We like the early founders of evangelicalism 50 years ago, Billy Graham, John Stott, J.I. Packer, Francis Schaeffer. Uh, Present day, we love missiologists like Ed Stetzer. We love uh, preachers like Dr. John Piper. We love uh, theologians like Dr. Wayne Grudem and Dr. D.A. Carson. I'm privileged to really uh, know all these guys. are wonderful guys, by the way. And uh, that would be our team. We believe what the evangelicals believe, and then a few more distinctives. And we tend to only have male pastors. First Timothy 3 and Titus 1 encourages us in that direction. Um, the, uh, the emerging house church guys, they're led by a guy like Neil Cole, who wrote the book Organic Churches, and Frost and Hirsch, two Australian missiologists. This team, uh, or this lane, I should say, uh, I'm kind of in it. Uh, Matt Chandler, who's here to preach this week, and my buddy Darren Patrick, these guys are both friends. This is kind of our lane. This is kind of where we're at. And uh, what it tends to be different from older Reformed theology in that worship is pretty free and we tend to be charismatic, meaning all the gifts are for today, speaking in tongues, healing. We believe in all of that and uh, we tend to, to be a little more loose about it. And what happened is in September 2006, Christianity Today wrote an article saying the two hot theologies among young pastors are this emerging reformers, our lane, and then the emergent liberals, the lane that uh, I was somewhat connected to and left. And I would say my problem with this team is not that they're trying to find innovative ways to do church, but they're also calling into question many Christian doctrines that should not be questioned, particularly by those who claim to be pastors. And say, oh, we're just asking questions. Asking questions, is Jesus fully God? Did he die on the cross in our place for our sins? Is anybody really going to hell? Do you need Jesus to go to heaven? Is sex outside of marriage, including homosexuality, sinful? And on many of these issues, they won't answer the questions. Now, uh, the leaders in this lane are men like Brian McLaren, who I, I love. And I know all of these guys, except for Rob Bell. I know all the guys in all the lanes. And I would tell you personally, they're all gracious guys. I love them. They've not been mean, cruel, or unkind to me in any way. So it's not a personal beef, but it's a concern for the content of their instruction. 
This would include Brian McLaren, Doug Paget, and Rob Bell, who also has a church called Mars Hill, no way affiliated with us in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And my concern is, like a guy like Bell, I mean, in his book, Velvet Elvis, he basically says, you know, if we get rid of, for example, the virgin birth of Jesus, we don't really lose anything. I say we lose the Bible and Jesus. That's a lot. That's pretty much everything. You're sawing off the branch we're all sitting on. If the Bible lies about Jesus, we've lost everything. Jesus' mother is declared in the Bible to be a virgin. That's what it says. If we lose that, we lose a lot. A guy like McLaren won't answer the homosexuality question. He won't answer the question of the cross or hell. All these questions, they continually duck. I asked uh, Doug Paget, and by the way, they're part of something called the Emergent Village, uh, not an organization that I'm favorable toward. And Rob Bell has McLaren and Paget cover his pulpit and preach for him. So they're all working together to some degree. And I asked Doug Paget, we contributed to a book. There's five of us listening to the beliefs of emerging churches and National Public Radio kind of hosted a debate, discussion, conversation. Can't debate anymore. You have to converse. Um, people's feelings get hurt, and then they blog. And so we had a conversation. And so I, I asked him, I said, is, and Doug's a friend and a good guy, a guy that I personally enjoy. I said, is it okay to be a homosexual and a Christian? He said, sure. It's like, really? Really? I mean, they're calling into question or outright dismissing Christian doctrine that has been established for a really long time. And so I would say the three lanes that I listed first, they're friends. I don't have any, you know, grave concerns, maybe some minor disagreements. Uh, this fourth lane of the emergent village, I think they've totally gotten off the highway and they're lost out in the woods. 